Welcome to episode three of Under the Hive of Madness. I am Ryan the Goblin King, and today I am joined by my co-hosts, Marky. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Beast. Hey, everyone. And uh, we flew him in again from Antarctica, Kevin, our special guest. What's up? <laughs> Antarctica, so. what the fuck? Yeah, it's cold down there. <laughs> it is it, down there. Antarctica south? Yeah. Because, you know, the North Pole's the other side. Yeah, I don't, I don't know geography. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, do you need, a, do you need a blast? We, we are, because I don't know. Do you need a know. blast template? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Very large one. I need a pie plate. Antarctica is south? <laughs> it's where? No, it's, wait, just, what, there's, there's, it's just downhill. Wait, wait, what's north? What's north? North Pole. No, no, no. What, what, what is the North Pole? What's that? That's it. It's just the North Pole. Isn't Green, it Antarctica, Greenland? though? No, no, it doesn't. There's no continent in the North. Oh, really? It, yeah. the North Pole is Russia. purely in. <laughs> all right, all right. So it's been, it's been said before, I am very dumb. So I'm just going to preface this with, <laughs> yeah, I'm very pole dumb. Don't is, judge me. North Pole judge me. pure ice. There's okay. no land underneath the North Pole. Antarctica, There's like, right? you know, little tidbits at the top of Canada. But what about Santa? Santa's North Pole, Next, right? Next episode, yeah. we'll talk about the geography of America. Episode 37? <laughs> but uh, Antarctica actually has land under. It. Oh, yeah, it's not entirely. Yeah, there's ice. like, there's like, like penguins. Else. There's penguins no. that live down okay, there. Okay, okay. There are a lot of them too. Yeah. You're penguins? Thinking, penguins? I think, I think, I think you've watched too much Happy Feet. I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. Santa lives, guys. <laughs> right. it, always, it always weirds me out that Happy Feet was uh, directed by the, the Mad Max dude. George was Miller. it really? Yeah. Wait, that's weird. It's George mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine that though? Like, like, hey, we really like those movies with Mel Gibson yeah, where a bunch of stuff blew up. Can you make a movie about singing penguins? That's how they got children. Hugo Weaving in it. <laughs> there you go. Jesus. You, you, you're out of it? I my microphone's like moving. I don't know. All right. Yeah. So, so, um, today's topic. In the, yeah, today's topic. In theory, eventually we're going to talk about lore. No, no better time than the present, right? So today's episode, we're going to talk about our favorite GW lore. So this isn't our house lore. This isn't the lore that we've come up with together as a gaming group. This is specifically favorite army lore. We can do favorite bit of lore later. But I think that'd be a good introduction. Uh, you want to you wanna start us off there? Me? Me? Yeah. I'm the, dude, I'm the worst one at lore. Here. That's why you should be first. That's why I'm first. Then it just gets better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but then I'm we'll also set the, first... the expectations low. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know exactly, but I'm also yeah. the first impression. People are like, "This guy's a fucking idiot." I mean, well, they already know that because yeah, of Antarctica. Exactly, but, yeah. but I'm me. You're fine. You're <laughs> oh, fine. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. So uh, my favorite army is uh, my Death Watch. Uh, so when I, I, you guys heard my story when I originally started. When I originally started. Uh, I started with Salamanders, and uh, I switched over to Death Watch because of the uh, the RPG that came out. Uh, what was it called, Ryan? Death Watch. Uh, no, 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 no. The the company that made it. Oh, Fantasy I know it's called game. Fantasy Flight. Death Watch, you bastard. <laughs> it's like the what game, was the game called? Death the Watch. game they came out called Death Watch. What was the name of that <laughs> game? Yeah, Death Watch. Fantasy, Fantasy Flight, Flight made the whole Fantasy slew Flight of games. Yeah, so they Death came Watch. out with that RPG. <laughs> Death Watch. Death Watch. Death Watch. Forearm Deborah. Forearm Deborah. Forearm Deborah. Forearm Deborah. Yeah. 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 Forever. Yeah. It's a really what? weird Death Watch conversation. So, yeah. So once the RPG came out, I had a full army of salamanders. I switched over to Death Watch because I actually really liked the way they look. Uh, and I mean, that's typically how people start out when they pick an army, right? They like the way they look and then yeah. they, they yeah. build off the lore yeah. and then they, they kind of come up with their own lore or their own story for their army. Um, I honestly wasn't really a lore guy because, uh, as you can tell, I don't read. Uh, you can tell by how dumb I am. Words uh, are hard. W- words are hard. And they blur together. They really do. Well, it is hard to read. I mean, I'll even admit, like, after a couple pages, I guess, they're getting real sleepy. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, there's this, uh, uh, this is why I love Tom, because he pretty much just reiterates lore he to me. He loves me. I, I do. <laughs> I, I love this about him. <laughs> so I feel judged. Okay, perfect. I feel judged. Perfect. I feel loved. <laughs> Again, this is why I love Tom because he re- reiterates lore to me. So he's almost like an audio book, right? Because I don't read. My audio book on repeat. Yeah, pretty much. He pretty much does the same thing every We're week. We're all and an it's, audio book on repeat. I, yeah, I, I've lore. been I've been concussed one too many times, and I have a really horrible memory. So like uh, when people tell me stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, that's great, that's great, that's awesome. I've never heard that before. It's like, dude, I literally just told you this last week. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 you didn't. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, so, so yeah, so like lore wise, I wasn't always into the lore, but I always loved hearing about it. Uh, I just never read. Like, I don't, I, th- this is a, th- all right, we're going to full, full confession. I don't read my codexes like fully, like front. I don't, to, I don't front think to there's back. a lot. There's not a lot of people. That I don't read. think there's a lot of people that read. Them right, full right. Full. I, I, I like, did, but that's because I'm pathetic. I, I like looking well, at the pictures. I'm yeah. a picture guy. Yeah, I'll, me too. I'll sit down. I always make it like this is rule books in general. I will always make a college try. You know, if it's a D and D rule book, if it's codex, if it's a core rule book for. 
I'll I'll make the college try. And usually about like a third in, I go, okay, I just need the information I need. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. Your first sure. your first codex, you'll try. Yeah. You will. I mean, I did. And then every codex after that. I'm like, hmm, if I go on YouTube, I can learn this a lot faster. Baltimore. <laughs> I, I actually, I've actually got Shout out to Baltimore. Yeah, like, right. I've actually gotten well, to the for point the stuff, where, it, where it's kind of like almost the op, not, not the opposite, but like I'll be listening to Lorehammer or I'll be talking to somebody in like a discord about lore and, and I'll just, I'll be like, this is wrong. 40 hours of research later, I'll be like, ah, on page three of the Death Watch's second codex, it says, <laughs> and people will be like, Ryan, you are obsessed about the, the shape of bolts on one starship. Shut up. <laughs> I can respect that. But, but, but you were right. He was right. But I was right. Yeah, but I was right. <laughs> so tell us, Mark, what is the lore for that you know? So, so, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and break it down as best as I know. I'm I'm not a lore master. I don't claim to be. Uh, so the Death Watch are, podcast is over. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> and I'm never gonna listen to this guy ever again. I'm the comedic relief, guys. Come on. If you, if you haven't found that out yet, I, I'm not great. We're in trouble. I, I, yeah. I was gonna say I'm not <laughs> great at it. Shit. Second reason podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I am it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was a jab it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh. Singer. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, Death Watch. Yeah. So the Death Watch originated, I believe from uh, an Imperial Fist uh, chapter master. He founded it along with the Inquisition. Uh, Ryan can obviously correct me because he's read more than me, but this is what I've, this is what the wiki says. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, from the knowledge that I've gathered, uh, they were created because of the uh, Tyranid presence was uh, just becoming overwhelming, and they needed a they needed specialists. They needed uh, Space Marine specialists. So what they do is uh, this Imperial Fist Chapter Master basically founded. He was the first uh, Watch Master, which the Watch Master is basically the equivalent of a Chapter Master for normal chapters, and uh, he founded them and he creates kill teams and uh, he basically. Uh, you know how like the inquisitions are the inquisition is basically the they're the only people who can who can claim extermin uh, exterminatus Right, right. right. Okay. I got you. I got you. Uh, yeah, organization. The organization. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. They're, they're the yeah. only organization that's able to uh, say, ex or like basically say, okay, this, this plant's exterminatus. Right, uh, Watchmasters right. are also that. They can also claim exterminatus on well, a Well, the planet. Death Watch is part of the Inquisition, right? So the, kind the of, thing is that they are kind of part of the Inquisition. Of, they uh, they, they were founded under the Inquisition, right? Negative. So oh, they're no. actually a parallel of the Inquisition as oh, a part of it. Okay. They uh, work they, with, I know they work with Ordo Xenos. That's it. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say. I was like, it's order their, like Zenos. department. Yeah, so, the well, Inquisition not even that. They are a parallel of it because they don't have to listen to the Inquisition. Yeah. they are their own entity. Oh, okay, they Which will is one do of death, very few. Yeah, the they, Death Watch can be sent at the Inquisition. Right. So the Inquisition okay. can basically say like, they, so think of the Inquisition as the hand that points, and the Death Watch just go wherever they, wherever they want. They're like, okay, you know what? This mission right here takes priority over everything. If the Inquisition's like, hey, we have some stuff going on over here, they can just be like, no, nah, fuck off. Nah. This is more important. We think this. Yeah, so they don't have to listen to the Inquisition. Okay. They can do whatever they want. They're a parallel of the Inquisition and, and they're not really a branch. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. way more independent. Uh, they're, they're basically the, the uh, masters of destroying and killing the Xeno scum. Oh, I'm Dipper. And, uh, what? <laughs> what <laughs> and so so they were created obviously to uh fight against the xenos the impending doom that is the tyranids uh the tyranids are uh another story another one of my favorites so another reason i chose the death watch is because i love tyranids and i love their lore i love starship troopers if you don't know me already i love the starship bug troopers. menace yes yes the bug yeah only good bugs a dead bug yes and uh, I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. Going to war. <laughs> well, I'm Dipper. So, so <laughs> what makes what makes the Death Watch as a Space Marine chapter different from regular chapters? So the thing is about them. The thing about them is that they are not a chapter. They are an organization that takes from each chapter and creates kill teams to specialize in specific missions to take out Xenos, whether that's, hey, we need you to take out this hive tyrant because he is just just, just wrecking the system. Uh, they are 
that they basically send out multiple kill teams to basically take out high priority targets. Go so that's why or but, like grab stuff like, like oh these, yeah, yeah these Eldar have some crazy weapon, some kind of crazy some relic. Crazy we need to take it away. Tech. Yeah, we need to take it away. Exactly. And lock so it they're very somewhere. they are also very into Xenos tech. So they have like yeah, for the example, Death Watch doesn't lock tech away. <laughs> no, not at all. You have that dreadnought with that thing bolted to it now. That yeah, but that was just that's just my flavor though. I oh, took yeah. a, I took a Townar uh, Townar weapon and scaled it down, three D printed it, and then stuck it to my to my uh, Redemptor dreadnought. But that that fits with the lore. Stole it, it does, yeah. So it, so it does now because with the new codex, they actually released like a little picture of how they retrofitted a pulse rifle from Tau uh, to work for them. It was all purified, and now it's like a bolter weapon that they use. So and I pretty got much like you've got like servo skulls constantly purified, like on the model. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I have yeah. A servo skull, rather than having seals. whatever AI the Tau had. In yeah, there, yeah. You got a servo. Skull oh yeah, it's purified it. now. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's got it's got brain working it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, how do how do they recruit? So they recruit from each chapter. Basically, uh, when uh, Marine is known to do very well against Xenos, he's basically like uh, the the Death Watch see that, or the uh, they they go to each chapter and they're like, hey, we need your best Xeno killer uh, Marines, veterans, all veterans. There's not like a there's not like a scout that they're like this guy is really good at killing Xenos. No, they want veterans. Are they so like they, first company veterans or are they just it, like? I don't believe they they have like a specific like. I mean, maybe they do pull recruits. I, I, I'm honestly not sure. They could pull recruits. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, 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 really they're literally like, called Space Marine veterans yeah, like there, in, in the like, Codex. There's two ways that you end up in Death Watch. And the first is it's a like venerated position. Right. Death Watch specifically requests you. And the second one is like you knocked over the water cooler while the Inquisitor was talking. And, the, and he's like, Death Watch. <laughs> yeah, like a, you're talking about a black shield yeah well, no, <laughs> it's, it's no, a no, shitty a, position like like you fuck up real bad they're like yeah. go to the death we don't want to deal with you go to the death it's like watch. when lt walks in um, says um, we need three <laughs> uriel yeah, so, uriel ventress uh went against the codex astrades astrades Astartes. Astartes, thank you. Uh, Uriel Ventress went against the Kodos uh, Astartes and um, got in a lot of trouble because he's a fucking ultramarine and he got sent to the Death Watch. Oh, okay, I didn't know if they actually then, sent like, the undesirables to Death Watch. Yeah, and then he went through the Rubicon process right. and now he's a primaris marine and now he's an ultramarine again that's crazy so yeah he's on back bitches well yeah, i know yeah. they th there's not marines that really like mess up they they have something called black shields and black shields are basically uh marines that have like renounced their chapter uh or they they either feel like they're from uh they're, I guess it's kind of speculated that they're from either traitor chapters or chapters that have died out. And they basically oh, like take away their chapter pauldron or they cover it up. Uh, and then they become what's known as black shields. And black shields are like almost like uh, they're like the, the red redheaded stepchild of the kill team. Uh, you don't really mess with them. They just kind of do their own thing and they're just ready to they're, they're basically trying to pay. They're they're trying to come back to the emperor's embrace they're trying to be like uh what, what is this like they're trying to yeah that's that's the word i'm looking for i have very small so vocabulary they're on like a pen their own little personal crusade well, exactly. Exactly. themselves yeah the almost emperor. like uh you know what do you call it uh black black templars yeah. or, or dark angels some, 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 no, 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 no black I'd... templars are on an eternal crusade okay you know, like but that's only because they lost like their planet or something, right? Well, there's there's kind of. more more than that. There's more. Than that. There's more <laughs> yeah. to it than that. Oh, they're not just dummies that just Black you know, fly around. Are, are zealots. <laughs> yeah, yeah I got they're you. complete zealots. Religious zealots. Yeah, right? it, has, religious it zealots. has a lot to do with with the fall of Dorn and yeah, know, it was with you. the fall of Dorn and then the way the the uh, Codex Astartes was implemented in the, like the the salt between the Imperial fists. Uh, I got you. stuff too. So yeah, now now that you guys heard uh, the nonsense that well, I spew, that is Death Watch. I actually have it. So so I yeah, think it's really yeah. cool. Like to to. To from a, from a scrub standpoint, to what you said. <laughs> wow. No, no, my, I'm the scrub. Oh, I was like, I'm just scrub. because I play Eldar. No, the, <laughs> no, please. Um, like I said, you guys are like the masters of lore compared to me. I'm. This is well, what I know from so a basic one of, standpoint. One of the things that I've always seen when people play Death Guard, Death Watch. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> on tabletop is like they just have death watch guys everybody's painted black they've got the one silver done oh no you actually like you are true to lore every single one of your death watch guys he's got his silver left arm is silver yeah, yeah, left, arm left arm is, left arm is silver and then and he actually has the, the right arm has the original, yep, uh, the original chapter, chapter. Yeah. and then the reason is really cool now the reason really cool. for that um is because their whole thing when you leave your chapter um 
most cases, you're not meant to ever come back. No, that's not true. You actually do come back. No, you do, depends, but you're not de- meant yeah, to. Yeah, it depends like, on... You're, you're taken most of the time, into the you're going to die first. Yeah, you're taken oh, yeah, into yeah. the Death Watch under the precedent that you may never return. Oh, yes. right, right. And uh, when you do, they repaint your armor. Right. And now, the only reason they leave that one shoulder pauldron isn't really about honoring your own chapter. No. It's, it's to not piss spirit. off your machine spirit yeah, of your armor. Spirit. Exactly. Right. Oh, right, because right. they're yeah. kind of like tied to their chapter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, it, but it's really cool, because like, again, on at tabletop not a lot of people have taken the dedication to like put that part of the yeah. lore in and the cool Free thing hand. about no, no. <laughs> and the cool thing about yours is you've got like 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 there's 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 even a little bit of humor in there you have angry you have an angry i do Marines yeah i got some lamenters i got some yeah. angry marines it's pretty fun i yeah. got some homebrews i got uh something called the cougars awesome. uh so the reason i call them the cougars because uh i was trying to do a space wolf and i really messed up the face on the freehand yeah. <laughs> so i was like all right now this is a space cougar it's space, space cougar. cougar yeah, yeah. Nice. you got any more made up animals there griff you want to talk <laughs> about it i thought i told like you to stop <laughs> making up <laughs> animals. one of them chupacabras <laughs> chupa things chupa yeah. thingy <laughs> All right, man. So, yeah. so Kevin, you're you're all right. Shoot across the table. The, me. Yeah. All right. So, for me, I mean, it, it is my army, and it, it it's a kind of a reoccurring theme. So, I'm gonna go with my Imperial Guard. Just okay. Imperial Guard in general are, are right, pretty right. great. Um, I love well one just the idea that in a universe that is so terrible as Warhammer, that like just normal people have to pick up a gun and fight like that is the terrors of the universe yeah and they they fight against the some of the worst stuff i mean like yeah gray knights fight bigger demons and are more likely to succeed but the imperial guard are expected to every day fight for the survival of their species well there's like a thousand gray knights there's like an uncountable number of guard so if a big ass demon grows up on backwater planet two guards dealing with it right and and (laughs) until either the space marines or the inquisition shows up to like handle it and usually neither do yeah and usually neither do so guess what it comes back down to little basic joe do do we have any good resources on that planet no okay then fuck them (laughs) and um like also right before starting my imperial guard army i actually worked on a military base and so that's one of the reasons like i went with the od green and tan originally for my scheme is because i was every single day looking you know i was serving marines like <laughs> I, was, I worked for a see, company that was contracted it. to work for the marine corps <laughs> and so like i was there with the marines and i saw the humvees i saw the seven tons i saw all that stuff there was artillery flying over my head on my commute to work like it's no joke yeah, you know helicopters there. come there in. <laughs> you know it's 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 kind of cool stuff and it's a little bit awe-inspiring and so like when i finally got around to making my warhammer army he's like yeah imperial guard let's do this and so yeah, i painted up, up all my dudes od green and tan you know i, I strapped backpacks to the outside of one of my tanks like i got it i'm also a huge fan of just like world war ii aesthetic with it yeah. so like i strapped logs to the back of my yeah, lemon rust like how the the Russian strapped him to the tank destroyers yep, and the got camo and netting stuff. on uh, I got some camo board. netting on my Sentinel, my Chimera, my artillery pieces got camo netting covering up the back. And well, uh, and you did and you did something else that like not a lot of guard players do. A lot of guard players go out and they buy a box of Cadians and now they're playing Cadians. You've got this mixed guard unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that that's personal lore. That, we we're gonna try and go into yeah, that later. Well, but it is it I mean it is personal lore, but it's all well, it's his personal lore for how he built that army. Right. But if you actually read a lot of the guard books, which it I like I yeah. know you like and the that's, novels. That is how I my deep dive into Warhammer was I bought Eisenhorn, I bought Ravener. And I bought first and only all yeah. three of those omnibuses. I just went into Barnes Noble and I was like, all right, these are, like I had just kind no of barely added. scratched the Facebook surface. Like, was, you know, this has been Facebook was still pretty brand new. And I, had, you know, right off the bat as a Warhammer fan, found one of those Warhammer groups. And I had seen people talk about, you know, these are th- like some of the go to books this right. before like 15 hours was like, no. Yeah, I was going to say, best. I was like, see, like the first book I ever read was 15 hours. Yeah, this one, like 15 hours, I guess either was hadn't Such been out yet book. or like just My didn't have the first and only. Too. Sh- yeah, first. But and like, only I have still have time. I have first <laughs> and only in hardback. Like that's. Oh, what I read. wow. That's impressive. Yeah. But yeah, so like I plowed through the Gaunt's ghost books and like you get to know the characters and it's it's a good it's a good yeah. read all the way through that that whole arc all three of those omnibuses that i read the the thing that the thing i think that that's so interesting about imperial guard as an army in 40k is in a universe of monsters and super soldiers here are humans 
Yeah, he was right. just the normal dude. Yeah, this right. is it, it, this is great. the stormtrooper. This the is the bro. this is the more, uh, mobile infantry from Star uh, Star, Starship uh, Troopers. Yeah. Like these yeah. are the guys it's that just are just out there, and they're get, like they're getting killed in the thousands, but like yep. they fight anyways. Millions, because because <laughs> you either fight and die or you die. That's right. your two options. So I heard I heard the thing recently. Someone was talking about Imperial Guard, and they were saying that you know um, if you you look into it. And you hear the stories of them. Imperial Guard are not ever used on assault missions. They're almost exclusively on defense. Yeah. Except for in a few times in uh, like Gaunt's Ghosts and stuff. Yeah. They are some of the, some of its defensive use, some of its offensive use, but they're specialized. The Gaunt's Ghosts are specialized light infantry, and that's why they're useful in these assaults. Ah, okay. Is because they'll send in, you know, some like normal, like they'll send in death core to go to go crunch the line and do the dying. And the, the ghosts will sneak around the back, use their camo and their light infantry tactics to go harass enemy lines. Or in one book, they assassinate a traitor general who was Imperial Guard. He lost the battle and he's like, well, I guess I'll just give up all my, you know, intel to uh, to chaos and join the join the blood pact and yeah, do all that. Right. And so, like, they sneak onto this planet and, you know, full on spec ops, get in there and just murk this guy. <laughs> before he can give up too much intel that's awesome but to get back to where i was going which is cool with how he built his army is that is when they talk lorically about how the guard work oh they all the have like I, different lore the right? idea that you would have a guard unit that was all you know like oh, it was all first mixed. very very first deployment sure they're all cadians but by like mission 10 oh yeah there there's like patch. it's a hatch patch they, they oh, basically yeah. go okay these are the people who survived this planet's assault reform and and whatever and continue you know they either take the regiment that's got renown so they're still the cadian even though you know even got, though they got some you, got, and, yeah. you know just infantry that happened to live yeah. through the last battle tag along yeah and that and that's cool with what he's done because he's totally fully embraced that yeah, oh, like, yeah and you right, don't exactly. see that on you don't see that on table on table i did a little see... bit of meta chasing with it too like not gonna lie there was you know because i had just started i didn't know what i was gonna do so i started with cadians and yeah. then i'm like all right the meta is changing a little bit I got some Vostroyans because they can do cool stuff that's more in line with the meta. That was totally, totally my idea to bring Vostroyans. <laughs> I, I had been eyeballing it and I had heard some, you know, this is in, Dabble. there was some, some dibble Dabble. dabble whispers Dabble. on the internet, you know, of, oh, the Vostroyans uh, doctrine are pretty good. They opened up a GW store right down the street from where I was living. That was dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but that's, the always, guy, that's always that's the always guy who ran it also ran Vostroyans. And he was like, no, here's some, here's some cool tricks from somebody who's been playing them for a oh, long time. Yeah. And I was like, I like where this is going. This is, this is some cool stuff. And the, the, that was right. When psychic awakening came out, they added some new stratagems and he's like, all right, you can combine some of these and, you know, that's play sweet. some so, dirty tricks. So what is your favorite lore from Imperial Guard then? <sighs> that's, what, what made you choose them? I guess is probably yeah. the best question, right? Well, I think he answered that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah he, for the most he, part, he, yeah. Likes, he likes the mechanized well, in mechanized infantry, infantry yeah. the the basic level of that I'm probably if you want me to like pick a regiment specifically or just like a, yeah like like what's yeah, your I, favorite actually one? I'd like to know what regiment yeah that's a tough one I kind of like certain aspects about different ones okay I mean you Go know honorable mention Krieg because oh, Krieg, right right yeah, yeah. but <laughs> did you guys see the meme in the in the, in the in the same vein they're kind of generic at the same time they're cool though like everything about krieg is is awesome but it's not my favorite um probably real regiment that you can play on tabletop i like armageddon steel legion okay oh, right. I, oh yeah. wow, okay i don't yeah. play them i kind of thought about them taloran are also right there up there because i like the when i was first building them i was uh i was like man these guys could be like because i only had a few guys and i was like tag teaming on with these with the what, other what guys taloran look like uh, uh, they're the desert Arabia. warriors oh okay, okay their planet didn't start that way their planet started as like a normal like good planet and they got in a fight with was it the iron warriors i don't remember exactly they got in a fight with some chaos space marines that came over remember. to like and they glassed the planet and the the imperials that were living there went into bunkers and they came out and the surface was just toast oh jesus and then and then planet. they were like is that all you got chaos so the chaos <laughs> invaded like full-on ground invasion and so they adopted a bunch of guerrilla tactics hiding tanks under sand and you know and like but if you can imagine like lawrence of arabia they lawrence of arabia the chaos marines and they yeah. won that's sick and they eventually won it was just too costly to continue the invasion so that was pretty cool but armageddon steel legion like for the kind of the similar tactics mechanized 
out in the wastelands, like the lore of Armageddon, the fact that it just keeps becoming a hot zone yeah, over yeah. and over again. And these these guys are like, all right, I guess round two, let's go. Yeah, what do you awesome. got? <laughs> yeah, there's like, what, five wars of Armageddon? Right oh, now? yeah, there's a bunch of. And yeah, there's a little, you know, plot armor space Marines coming to save the day. But like, yeah, I, but feel, I feel really. like, like I feel it's like still like, a war of attrition. Like, like, if, like, like you, you, you either read Hell's Reach, listen to Hell's Reach, or watch the the super awesome Hell's Reach YouTube, and like you can see it. Like the Imperial Guard are in there, and they're like hiding behind walls, throwing. Uh, there's the one scene, the dude laying out debt packs, trying to blow up these orc tanks. Like the they drove out into the middle of nowhere, and they're wreaking havoc on <laughs> like orc <laughs> rear lines. Yeah. And then there's another scene. They actually Jesus. save the Space Marines yeah. by like. They come in from a flank. They just deploy like a wall of infantry and they just gun down a horde of orcs. Well, and they've got the Rough Riders, which are just no, that, they don't have them any. Well, I guess they, they I thought might. that was Krieg. Yeah, that's Krieg thing. So they used to be Tolerant used to have, it used to be Tolerant. You used to be able to take them kind of for everybody and they all had their own little flavor. It didn't really translate uh, to okay. tabletop, but yeah. but they were available. Now they legend them for everybody but Krieg. And that's oh, because okay. Krieg specifically bred war horses. Yeah, they have toes instead of hooves. Yeah, for better what? traction. Yeah. They have a little bit of toe action going on. Yeah. And apparently they have like what? subdermal armor, almost like a space marine, oh, like black sick. carapace yeah, or some yeah. bullshit. All I'm telling you is that admac horses are better. Well, yeah. Ro- <laughs> robot horses are pretty cool. Robot, we're robot horses. But yeah, and so like the Krieg have their and they're voided out. They're massive. Yeah, they're 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 huge horses. And that's why in, in the tabletop they have what like three wounds apiece. Well, they're basically they're space such an bikes. insane unit on tabletop or like like lore and tabletop. Like they've oh, got yeah. an explosive tip spear. Here, let me strap a claymore use. on a la- oh, it's actually more like an RPG shaped charge. <laughs> yes, strap to the end like of a lance. Thunder stick. Yeah, it's it's like a yep, thunder stick from sick. Mad Max. So imagine a dude on it like a, you got one on like yeah, an yeah. ogre version of a of a horse coming at you <laughs> with this fucking RPG on a stick. Oh uh, yeah, and like you see it in uh, there was that the Character animation joust? I shared in the group that that was pretty cool that Krieg one. That's like, I just love their las guns. It's like the yeah, orc, they're, it's like they're the orc from the yeah, like they're, like yeah, yeah. they're like they're las guns, but they look like M14s. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's that's really? Yeah. So so part of the Krieg lore that's also really cool is. All of their equipment is manufactured on Krieg. It's built for a purpose. Huh. So yeah, and Krieg, Krieg is relatively close to Terra, and like they didn't come to the defense of the, so, the so Emperor during little, the Horus Heresy. No, so no, they no. Have this like they like, did. Huge well, they back. tried. There was a yeah. there was a civil war there. They feel like because of circumstances they couldn't control, they let the Emperor down. So their uh, entire culture is now die. Make so, it make it up to the Emperor. So yeah. right when yeah. right when uh, you know in the beginning there, uh a bunch of plate like Krieg was super resource rich and they were exporting all their materials to help the the Imperium. And eventually the dudes who were like running Krieg were like, this is bullshit. I want to keep all this stuff. Yep. And so then they just did. And a whole bunch of the noble houses were like, yeah, let's do this. Who gives a shit? The Empire doesn't care about us. So, and then there was like a little bastion of loyalists and they sent out a distress call and the Imperium's like, we can't do it. Like, we don't have the manpower to help you hold the line. And they're like, well, shit. And then they're like, this isn't going well. We really need help. And then they're basically given like firestorm instructions. Like, all right, uh, scorched earth then. You guys can't hold the line. Here's a secret bunker of uh, Ordinatus extremists. <laughs> and then they yep. nuked their own planet, like into the ground. Yep. And then it turned into a, just a shit war. Like just just the whole planet's, you know, continuous. Yeah, the yeah. whole planet's tore up and they got it. And they slowly fought to take it back. And eventually they won. So, so this is so exactly what I'm like, talking about. So that then after that, this. they eventually, the Imperium like wrote them off. They're like, all right, that planet's gone. Right. And then afterwards, they're like, Planet's been reclaimed for the Emperor. Yeah. And well, the Emperor was Emperor. like, wait, what? It's awesome. That's cool. Emperor? And then they're like, all farm right. Emperor. Okay. Now Perfect. where as can long we as go it's for the Emperor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because like our 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 ancestors fucked up. We have to atone for this. Since yeah. Right. They're, okay. They're so they're almost like the black shields of the guard, essentially. Pretty right? much, yeah. Kinda. And it's it's almost I think what you were thinking of was more the Vostroyans, Ryan, where during the Horus Heresy half the planet wanted to and the other half was well, like the, the no civil, we need to keep our people working in the factories to supply arms for the horse heresy you actually might you might actually i might have timelines but I, krieg may have krieg may have been the battle of the, the first battle of the beast but so, something it, krieg, it krieg happened had a during civil something war. else yeah. yeah krieg had a civil war which removed them and now they feel super bad mm. yeah whereas vostroya didn't have the civil war 
but instead of sending out guardsmen in the billions, they only sent out a handful of guardsmen and kept the, the rest millions. in the factories. <laughs> yeah, in the millions instead, and only kept them in the and then kept their people working in the factories, churning out uh, more war materials. And then afterwards, they're like, mm, "Feels bad, man. Every firstborn is now a guardsman. They yeah. can't. Oof. We're not going to let that happen again." Oof. Because they feel like, you know, what they did was necessary. You, right, right. You need the factories. Like the horse heresy consumed a lot of war materials. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was necessary. But at the same time, like, would it have been better? Could they have ended it faster with more men? Right. Yeah, Maybe. Right. But, you know, one world the where the guardsmen can't really or get the much resources. Yeah. Right. Golden yeah. age. Well, the biggest, the biggest resource that an imperial planet has is men. Right. right. Yeah. Except for this was a forge world. Right. So it was like their biggest resource also then became industrial. Now, now, really quick, just to wrap it up. Um, Imperial Guard PDF. So Imperial Guard, imagine if to be in uh, like the Army or the Marines, you had to be a National Guard and then only the best got to move on. Okay. So, so PDF. <laughs> or they, really bad timing. P- and, and PDF, <laughs> that, too, that too. There are ties. PDF planetary stands defense. for planetary defense. Planetary defense, defense force. force. And that's like your. Space every force. planet has a planetary defense Space force. Right, right. And they're basically <laughs> the force. speed bump to, to hold the line until more stuff get there. They're there to quell like riots and, you know, things like that. The small stuff. They're your everyday, like, man the watch kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, mm-hmm. after so often there's an Imperial tithe and they have to, each planet has a portion, whatever the agreement is between what probably the high Lords of Terra. Oh, okay. Cause I know each planet yeah, that's, that's is what different the and it's tithe based is. on, yeah, okay, okay, it's based off of what the planet's kind of output is. Yeah, Cause I was like, okay, so everybody joins the Imperial guard and I'm like, then who the hell does the planetary defense force? But so if it's like, Oh no, planetary defense force, everybody does kind of like, uh, just everybody's part of that. It's, yeah. It's kind of like a Switzerland mandatory. Service exactly. Deal. And then when it's a Imperial tithe, the best Imperial, Imperial Guardsmen or the best PDF guys then get to go off and be Imperial Guardsmen God, and, and never get to go and home. There's, and then there's other times where like, like, and there's, oh, oh, this, this crusade is steamrolling into our area. Everybody who's in the PDF right now is now Imperial Guard. Like you don't right. have a choice. It's just yeah, everybody is guard. And then okay. there's, there's a tithe where just every so often there's just a huge amount of resources that get taxed by the empire and off they go. Boom. Yeah. Done. But yeah, this, this is exactly what I was talking about. That's though, how 15 where, hours starts is that exact thing. Oh, against the orcs. The, his, well, his, it, that's not how the book starts, but the main character of 15 hours wasn't a PDF. His was, yeah, he, he was, was a farmer. He was a farmer. Yeah. yeah right. And then yeah, the just, Imperial just, Tithe here, came. Here's the so sword. Go fight. Guess yo. what? Yeah. Go, go fight for the emperor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, but this is exactly what I was talking about. Like, uh, oh, Kevin obviously knows a lot about the Imperial Guard. So like when me, and I'm stumbling over my words, but like, yeah, yeah, uh, Black Shield. Kevin's like, yeah, a billion words, Imperial Guard. <laughs> <laughs> and and that is the imperial guard mm-hmm. so I mean, there's a billion of us it makes so, sense we got a billion words yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tom what's your what's what's your army uh my favorite Why'd games my favorite games workshop like lore is honestly and and you know i may get guff for this because they're not seen as grimdark but if you actually read the lore tau are very grimdark i i love the tau empire and uh and in closer to that what i really love is i love the farsight enclaves which is a renegade section of the tau empire um quick synopsis of the tau empire lore they are, were a feudal type uh, society when they were founded by the um, the uh, Imperium, uh, they had found this planet. It had a bunch of aliens on it. The aliens were using sticks and stones and knives to kill each other, and they were at a, a state of war. Uh, and basically, the human the Imperium left. They got stuck behind a warp storm, so they couldn't re- return because they were gonna basically exterminate the life there and then take over. Right, the they're planet. like, oh, these guys aren't that bad. We'll, we'll yeah, come back we'll, later. Just, we'll just get rid of them and then we'll take over the planet for resources. Well, they weren't able to return to the planet for like a thousand years, Was right? That because like of the warp the, storm, uh, right? the age of strife and all that. Stuff? No, 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 no. It just, was just a generic warp storm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was, it was some amount of time in the thousands of years. 
Yeah, I think it was, it, it was like the amount of time was, was it, I, think, I believe it was 10,000. Long enough for them not it to have 10, sticks 000? and stones yeah, I anymore. I it was 10,000. If not, it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't very long. It wasn't long. In the it, world uh, yeah. of 40K, it was not a very long time. In, in the world of evolution and society. Exactly. I thought yeah, it was like it. warp time where it was like they were in the warp for no, a while. Or no, 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 it no, wasn't like that. They actually. No, they were cut off. They were on a very small plane um, in the universe and they were basically cut off. And then when the Imperium found them again, they actually didn't find them because they were like, Oh, there's a warp storm. They're expanding we'll or something, right? So what had happened was the Imperium was like, whatever, we'll forget about him. We'll come back later. And then all of a sudden, uh, across the Damocles Gulf, which is the closest like Imperium system, they found a drone. And this drone was floating through space saying, join the Tau Empire. Uh, we believe in peace across the galaxy. Join Imperium's us. Like, oh, hell no. Nah. Good, yeah. And the <laughs> so Imperium was Kool-Aid like, what piece. the fuck is this? <laughs> and they went over there and they were like, these cave-dwelling motherfuckers got rail guns and stable plasma now. Smart missiles. Yeah, <laughs> they have spaceships and they are on like 10 different worlds. Like, what the hell? Ha- Johnny? Johnny, why were you not watching this <laughs> you know i thought you said these were cavemen yeah exactly they were like they were <laughs> you know <laughs> so it was it's really cool because like all of a sudden you know the imperium comes back and they're like holy shit we're getting shot at now you know and so basically the story of the tau is that the tau operate off of a cast system right so you have and they're all named after elements you have the earth cast the water cast the fire cast the air cast and then you have this other cla- cast called the ethereals and the ethereals basically during this time when the imperial had originally seen them when they were tribes folks uh they were all at war with each other you had the people that were on the plains which are the fire cast you have the people that lived in the talent that lived in the mountains who actually had wings and they were called the air cast there were uh tau that lived in valleys where rivers ran through they were called the water cast you know and the ethereals came and said they just showed up and they were like hey Y'all need to stop fighting and we need to get along. And everybody was like, that sounds like a good idea. We should do that. They're like, smell me. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of talk as to like why this occurred. Um, nobody really knows. Like, what, the weren't they like, fighting amongst each other? They like, were all fighting yeah, amongst yeah. each other. Yeah. And then the ethereals Among, came in and said, them. hey, you know, you guys are going to do this. You guys are going to do this. You guys are going to do this. And they called it the time of the greater good because that is their, their lifeblood. That's what they believe. They believe in the greater good, meaning that any one Tau will sacrifice everything and any anything and everything if it's for a greater good. And this is how they expand. They expand their worlds. They're on spheres of expansion, expanding outward into the universe, bringing people into this greater good. Because that's the coolest thing about them is that they take on other things. Like, right, it's not just how Empire... Imperial planets they, as well, yeah, right? They yeah. have they have humans yeah. a part of them. Yeah, they're they're, called, they're called Guavesa, yeah, which yeah. means human helper. They have the Vespid, which are these like bug like. Such a weird name for the Monkai. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't, the, don't. yeah. That's oh, that was Monke. Monke. Uh, and then you have the Crute, which uh, Ryan Ryan can <laughs> attest to this. The Crute have some of the me most the amazing Groot. lore in them, but tabletop they suck. But bird dog, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, yeah, they're like bird people. We'll get we'll get into the Crute probably. We'll get into the Crute a little bit more next episode. But yeah, yeah the Crute, Crute yeah. So the, the 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 thing about the Tau is that they can have auxiliaries, and that's what you can join the Tau Empire. Anybody mm. can. They're not like the Imperium. The Imperium is like, if you've got more than two eyes, I don't like you. And, you know, the tower like, that's fine. You got an eye for a butthole. That's cool. I don't care. You can join us. Yeah. yeah, You believe in greater good? Come on, man. That's great. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) You like to see homos naked? That's cool. (laughs) You know? I'm not bad. But uh, my favorite thing about them is that there's, um, they're very much based on um smart like like being intelligent in combat they they do not fight wars of attrition uh they believe in their technology they believe that melee combat is like not the best so they're like hey ranged combat kill that guy from 400 yards away guess what you don't even got to touch works him. better yeah it works better works more better so they're all about yeah. like firepower they have robotic suits which i think are the coolest things on yeah the they planet. also don't like uh, care about your religion either right so like you can no. believe in the emperor all you want yep. yeah. as long as yep. you're a part of us you're working yeah, you're you can believe whatever you want good. yeah yeah. yeah. 
Um, they mm-hmm. have uh, they have these war suits that they they're pilots, and you know the fire cast are the warriors, the earth cast are the the engineers, uh, the water cast are the diplomats. Their language is like fluid, so that's like their whole thing is they learn languages. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, air cast, which is my favorite, because the coolest thing about the cast is they all look different. Oh, they're right, all right. the same species, but they all look different. Like yeah, it's almost like you got your dwarfs. Your yeah, humans, yeah, your like elves, earth cast like... are super short. Uh, air Air cast are like super tall. Like basically, my whole thing that made me like attracted to them in the first place was the fact that they have battle suits and vaginas for faces, and the fact that um you can fuck them in the face. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, big fan. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the fact that in a pro go. <laughs> so they they have battle suits, right? But the coolest thing is that when you think when we think of aliens, right? We think of these like scrawny, tall, big head, long arm things, right. and that's basically what the air cast look like. Right, right. Yeah. They look like our envision of aliens. So for me, I was like, wow, I found something relatable in 40k that also combines like battle suits which is like my favorite and so there's this dude uh farsight who is a commander of the Tau? right uh he my first like book i ever read about him was the battle of akanasha which it was like his first big deployment where he's like i'm going to go and and lead an army and and the planet was just like fucked like the planet is is plagued by these storms and tornadoes and you could tell it was once like a gothic world so everything is this red dust and what you come to find out is that red dust is actually rust particles from what once were metal buildings Hmm. oh so like it was like almost like a hive planet just everything is just reduced to powder yeah Yeah. and then there are these storms that have a mind of their own like the storms like growl and would follow them you know what? and so yeah it's it's gnarly dude. that is like, gnarly yeah. yeah and so basically you know there was an orc invasion mm-hmm. and farsight was sent to go fight the orcs and he like lost so many men fighting them but he finally like beat them like literally by tricking the orcs he realized that killing a war boss doesn't do shit nope because a bigger one takes his place so what he did was he used like satellite drones and like stealth drones to pretend that they were orcs in a crowd and would start fights between the other orcs so huh. he would literally get one or- war boss to start fighting with another war boss yeah. hey you you bitch. yeah he'd be like your your mother was a whore they were and then they would start and then when they <laughs> well, were fighting just, just, more just orcs two, would be drawn to that just two fight. drones and one drone's like what's your name yeah, yeah. Fuck Tony you. fuck you Tony yeah. no that's literally and then while they were fighting the, the far side oh, was like ah, nuke him you know like yeah. yeah and so it was great and then he eventually ended up like following these orcs off the isle off the 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 earth and he encountered chaos yeah and because he encountered chaos he learned that the ethereals uh have been lying to them to the well, greater town and, and didn't i think like an ethereal died during the all first, four or, yeah, ethereals all on died. his hunter cadre were killed yeah during this like invasion so so, so no more like quote no unquote, more mind pheromone. control yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing is the ethereals have been like talked about having mind control over town right. hey, yeah because or, they pretty much or, just yeah, told them stop runs. fighting and then they stopped yeah, fighting well and that's all thing uh, an ethereal would go up to a fire warrior and if he was like kill yourself he would do it you yeah, know that's crazy and like they yeah, never questioned it remember you know, the remember the pop trend. all the ethereals are dead until like, all the there's nobody far telling us like, what to do anymore yeah farsight yeah. was like wait where a minute where am i <laughs> you know S- single I? single I tier for the pop trend. now and so basically the what happened is gone <laughs> um is that farsight kind of went crazy like he was like oh my god like my, my the entire like greater good is that still a thing like uh, what are we doing and so he took the remnants of his like cadre which is like his army fleet and then he just like fucked off like he's just like and he went to like he founded his own planets and he then went into exile himself yeah and paint his army red so his army army so his army is red yeah because of akanasha because Mm -hmm. of the red sands okay and because of how many he lost because that was the thing is after that war the ethereals were like hey pull out and he was like what are you kidding me we just took it over we just won yeah we need to just finish up and they're like no no pull out he was a Tau Empire, yeah. Okay, so he was there with, like, the Shadow original, Sun. Yeah, if you look at the original codex for the Tau, mm-hmm. that crisis or that commander on the front is Farsight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, he's the, in the regular 
he's regular, in regular Empire he's Army, in an or color. Suit. Yeah. 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 That was well, actually Farsight. And isn't Farsight like, 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 so the tower very short lived and isn't Farsight one of the people that like breaks? Cause he's got like a demon sword. So Farsight, he, like, when he fought the Necron. chaos, no, when he fought the chaos, he grabbed what is called the Dawn blade. The Dawn blade. Yeah. And, the, and he used it. And Farsight is the only one in the Tau empire to have like really like gotten into melee combat. Yeah. And that's why I like them is because they're, they're Tau Empire. So they have these great guns, but Farsight Enclave are good at close range I, combat. I think he believes in corn. He, he so was, he was like, touched by corn. No, So that's like the whole thing is like, there's books on this stuff where yeah. Farsight literally has a space Marine with him. Yeah. Oh, there's, okay. a, there's a death watch space Marine that follows Farsight around as an advisor. Huh? Like because it's he's technically not alive. It's the machine spirit. It's the machine spirit of his eye. Yeah, um, yeah. He that, has cybernetics. Yeah, and basically it. a fire warrior or a, uh, a pathfinder team, which are like the scouts. Right. They were doing on a jungle world, kind of like a Catachan style world, mm -hmm. and they found this like gene stealer incursion, um, and there was all these dead Death Watch around. And when they start, they hit one of the spore mines and some, uh, one of the Guavesa was like, yo, put, put a battery on this guy. Cause he saw the aspects, you know, which oh, was, okay. and, and so they were like, what, why, why do we need to put a battery on him? And they're like, no, just hook him up to this battery. So they hooked up a battery to the space Marine and he got up and was like, kill Tyranid and like just started walking around like blowing Tyranids away Oof. yeah and then you find out in this book later because uh Farsight like captured an Inquisitor um the Space Marine walks up and he's just like Farsight just wants to know why you're here and he's like what the fuck are you doing here you know like oh. and it's this whole thing like it's crazy like Farsight is honestly out of all of like Warhammer itself and like the universes and stuff. Mm -hmm. All he gives a shit about is his people and understanding the universe. Yeah. Right, right. He's driven by knowledge, but he's and he's like he's a sword toting, plasma gun shooting, crazy badass, battle suit yeah. badass. You know, like so one of the things that I always found like super or that I find super interesting about the town. I don't know how you feel. You you kind of brought this up, but I don't know how you feel about it. Is like a lot of people immediately do oh that they made the communist jokes with the, for the greater yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the thing that, the thing that uh, amuses me so much about that is, is like, there's a fundamental misunderstanding of uh, history. You at American world history. Mm. Um, so kamikaze pilots used to paint on the side of their kamikazes on their zeros for the greater good. Mm -hmm. The Tao Empire is very much based off of Imperial Japan during yes, World War very II. Much samurai, oh, yeah. So uh, it's yep. just, it's very, very interesting to hear people be like, oh, you play Tao. Because I, I also play Tao. Uh, and I, I have my own, I have my own homegrown lore with Tao, which is why I'm not talking about Tao today. But um, uh, yeah, people are always like, oh, well, you must be a communist. I'm like, no, dude, like it's totally different seed. Yeah. Totally different seed. Yeah. There's, There's gotta understand that. Between Imperial and, and, the way communism functions in most people's eyes. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. I think but, communists would tell you. You're yeah. The thing, I'm saying, I'm saying from a general yeah, perspective, the, the overlap between basically yeah. the state owning everything is enough that most or people the, can't grasp the or difference. the state owning everything. Yeah. The, yeah, the that, state owning everything in a fascist society or the state owning everything in a communist yeah. the society. The thing that I, I hear the most, the, the thing that I hear the most to wrap it up. Yeah. The thing that I hear the most is that, uh, out of out of all of the forces in the 40k universe tau are the least bad guys right because yeah. everybody else is like kill everything that isn't us and people are like oh they're not very grim dark and i beg to differ if you dig into their lore oh, yeah. they are they are Fucked. They got like, some skeletons. They, oh yeah, they got, they're yeah. just they're just not as single out about it. Like, right. Single tier for the puck tune. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the, they're just not as outward about it. Like yeah. humans are like kill everything that isn't human, and Tao are like, oh no, join us, join us. We're not telling you that we're going to treat you like slaves. Or you die. know what I mean? Like or, yeah, exactly. Or like, like I know it's not yeah. technically yeah. Join us or die. War game. Join us or that's, yeah, that's yeah. it. In in one of the stories for one of the Dawn of War games, you find out that there's a bunch of Gavesas on this planet that join the Tau. Then you also find out that they've all been castrated so yep. that they can't reproduce. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause no, the humans would all... end up outbreeding the towel. What? So they're just yeah. castrated. You don't get to have children. Yeah. It's no, just one of those. That's things. cool. Like, you get treated better no, than you if, if you're an Imperial, no, but you don't get to have kids. No, so. no, no pee pee. No, yeah, exactly. no, 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 no balls. 
Oh, okay. okay. No balls. Pee-pee still work. You can never urinate again. And see, like, <laughs> now with the, the lore being evolved with this new expansion, I'm really interested to see, and we'll talk about it on some other episodes. Yeah, but yeah. Some speculation I'm really stuff. Interest, yeah, I'm really interested yeah. to see where, because now Shadow Sun is commanding the Tau, and she is becoming very, very zealous against anything that isn't Tau, including yeah. murdering her own auxiliaries. Yeah. And Farsight ain't about that. Yeah. So I'm really interested to see where that kind of goes. Yeah, big and I, I'm I'm interested to talk about my own my homegrown uh, Tau lore at some point because yeah. like, that that stuff's very much you know, same vein, very grim dark. Yeah, yeah. Lots of crazy mine thing. is mine. I, yeah. I have oh, my yeah. own, but it, I mean it's still Farsight, but I have my own. Yeah. You know. All right, Ryan. What's but yeah, uh, go ahead, Ryan. What do we? Oh you? man, What's your favorite. Now lore I gotta wear stuff. the hat. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Eldar. Um, I, I've gravitated between the different Eldar Eldari factions for most of my, my gameplay anyway. Um, so I'm actually really confused on how Eldar work, whether, whether it's dark Eldar, Eldar, uh, Harlequins, and then you have, oh, your, we'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> and then you have, I've, I've uh, skimmed the so surface. Exodites, right? That's yeah, like I, the fourth, like faction, I guess you kind, could say. Kind of. Yeah. So the, the Eldari are a very fractured people um so what is the overall like umbrella like is so that eldari that's the overall that's the umbrella? overall race okay so so what happened was the eldar rose to power and prominence uh and their, their big years ago. yeah right. their big enemy was the necron tier yeah and they were before and the necron was, tier well, became the necron well they were oh, created before right? transference yes yeah, oh, yeah. oh okay yeah. i didn't so know the war, they were, i thought the they were in, fighting after but yeah no. i thought they were fighting so, after so the war in heaven yeah war in heaven the war in heaven is is when that the, so the Necron oh. in order to get enough power to a center, the Necron tier in order to get enough power to take on the Eldar made the deal that made that, they were going to lose their souls or whatever yeah. it was right yeah that's a totally the, different uh, I thought they lost their souls trying to kill their own gods nope. by making no it no, 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 no 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 they no. they realized afterward that they needed yeah. to kill their yeah. own gods yeah <laughs> okay. and now that, that and a could, lot of that right? a lot of that uh, with the changes to the the Necron Lord in eighth edition a lot of that stuff is a little bit more wishy-washy yeah i think whether or not that whether or not the satan are actually gods or just like immense star beings is now kind of a little like oh like their own little species yeah Yeah. Yeah. well because like they more confirmed all that stuff like the emperor and the void dragon and like things like that Mm -hmm. which it's like I don't know. It sounds a little they're, unfeasible they're, that he's out there just slaying gods. They're right, they're con- right they're continuing thing. to like they're I the the void dragon. Hey, yeah, this is this is obscure lore. <laughs> We've deviated. <laughs> yeah, but um, so so the Aldari people just to focus on the Aldari people basically became very complacent and very happy with their society. There was no, you know, uh, they would grow old and they would die or they would die in combat. And basically one of their paths was like the path of rebirth. So as you knew that you were getting towards the end of your life, you would switch to the path of rebirth. You would just kind of go back into the ether and then you would be born back into your body or back into another body and you would continue to live. Is that like quote unquote, be born back into another body? Or that's like, like, like legitimate, like, like you're they, coming back. They are so psychically powerful. They were that able to thing. reincarnate. Wow. Okay. Their consciousness could and, basically and, pass into a new yeah. body. Wow. And, and some stuff hadn't happened yet. We're getting there yeah. <laughs> real soon, actually. Yeah. Some stuff hadn't happened yet. So the warp was a very tranquil place at the time. Oh, that's what the web I mean, tranquil was. for they the They created warp. pathways through. So, well, so the webway is like a super highway in the, that's anchored between the warp and the material. Right. Realm. But weren't the chaos gods already a thing before? Before, before the webway? Kind, kind of. of. <laughs> they, they weren't really what they are now. Because Slanesh is the youngest chaos god. Right, and that right. one came from what he's going to get right. to. Right. Right. So, so but, but before before that event, before that event happened, the, El, were, the Eldari were able to not be involved in that right they, they were the, the chaos gods were present but right. they know they weren't prevalent i guess you could say right? so that has to do with the fact that there weren't as many humans back then right no well <laughs> a, some of. of the established lore <laughs> there's, has reflected there's some, that they there, draw their power from like the, the humans perception right like corn yeah. is supposed to be like there's the a, oldest right like war has been like there's a, thing. a so there's Nurgle's a Nurgle's the oldest here let, let ryan talk yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. a weird thing that happens with the chaos gods and and a lot of this comes down to what's the codex lore what's games workshop lore and what has been written in books right and we haven't really touched on this yet but as far as games workshop is considered if it's in a codex and if it's in a rule book it's actual canon and lore if it's in a book it's somebody's fable that exists yeah. in that world yeah. so 
there was some stuff that was floated around a long time ago that that corn was born during the during humanity's middle ages. Right. And that that's where from all the violence, from all the violence. But if you break down the timeline of Warhammer 40 K, that means that corn was born way after slanish. Right. Right. Cause humanity existed millions of years, basically later. So than. there's all of these weird, like what actually, yeah, cause I mean, happens. there's always been more, but I understand what you're saying where you're like Nurgle's the oldest because there's always been life and death, right? Right. There's always the been other, death and disease yeah. always accompanies right. life. The, the other thing, the other thing to keep in mind is that the warp gods, the gods of chaos I, in air quotes are gods in air quotes for a reason. They're really powerful warp entities. They're not, they didn't create the universe. They're not, you know, when we think of capital G God or architect or we any think of like alpha Omega, yeah. the end. Right. Yeah. We, we talk about, there was nothing. Now I have made stuff and that's right. not how the chaos gods work. <laughs> and that was like, that's I like, like that. the, I have that. stuff. Now I have made stuff. <laughs> and if you want to go that level, that's the instant old ones. God. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe <laughs> whatever the old ones may have been. Cause the old ones. Yeah. So anyway, so let's just, I'm going to focus Eldar. on Eldari. Eldar. <laughs> yeah. So the Eldari became complacent in their society and they became incredibly hedonistic um and super hedonistic. Yeah. and by big, hedonistic, big word what does that mean uh so hedonistic is ba basically they that like murder orgies i like will smother myself in the blood of a virgin while so i like, kill this other person so and like beating off with the means. belts around your neck yeah and, yeah, 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 yeah 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 like 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 literally like climbing the closet door on yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly you ever seen like a like the images so, of like greeks where they're like on a couch being fed grapes yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hedonism oh, okay, yeah. okay but imagine like a, that across an entire species but sexual Yes, and, and way sexual. worse. So, so there were, and so there were, but but with time. two T's. So but, but sexual. <laughs> but sexual, exactly. <laughs> for our nipper. For our so, nipper. so there were two major components to that. One was sex, um, and just just out there sex, and then the other was well, there there, and then there was rock and roll to make the joke <laughs> happen. Uh, but murder was a big thing. There were right. murder cults, um, and that's reflected in the Dark Eldar. Uh, what are they called now? Dr not Dracari. Oh, Dracari. Dracari. Dracari, right. Skitari, Skitari is, uh, is Admech. Admech, Admech, yeah. Sorry. But uh, um, so essentially what ended up happening was, uh, to, to sum it up, the too long didn't read version, is that they hate fucked God into existence. That's a right. way to explain that. Right? <laughs> well, because so, the, the prolonged exposure to so many psychic beings dying and re Right, and so Nash Well, being, and not, not only that, but like you've got, you've got the most powerful psychic beings in the universe that mm -hmm. that are still here that we know about who have just massive influences on the warp by existing. Every Eldar is a more massive psyker than the top tier, top rated Imperial sanctioned psyker. Really? Yep. Yes. So like, so, uh, than gray so like, kind of so like you just, you just popped out an Eldar baby and that baby is more powerful than a great in, in wow. different ways. If they can't, they, they, they're naturally uh, like they're, attuned to the warp, yeah, right? They're, they're warp attuned, not, not like battle caster level. Right. Like not nonsense. like I can control the yes warp. And, it's like, I'm yes attuned to the warp. No, <laughs> well, they like, don't, the they don't guardian. tap into the crazy battle master crap because if they do, they're fucked. Right. Cause so then they walk a path, which means that they don't use their psychic powers. Okay. Having a nuke and not having a nuke and not using it and not having a nuke are two different concepts. Right. Right. The Eldar are walking nukes that choose not to use their nuke power. Right. So they're, okay. they're weird boys that don't accept the warp, right? Right. Yeah. They're unweird boys. They're unweird boys. Uh, <laughs> normal boys. They're little. They're, they're, yeah, they're so, little. They're little brains. They're not big so, brains. So yeah. So so essentially, like hedonism, murder cults, sex cults, everything happens. Right. All of this is just amplified in the warp, and Slanish is born. Right. The and god of Slanish, excess. Right. Right. And when Slanish is born. <laughs> No, that too. Not booty yeah, action. Everything. No, all Excess, of that action. All the, the god of hedonism or yeah. goddess of hedonism. It, it depends. It, the, the Eldar refer to Slanish as she who thirsts. Right. Um, and they refer, when they sp speak about Slanish, they refer to Slanish as it rather than having a gender. But anyway, right. um, but so Slanish was also born. the prince and like other the, things. Right, right. The, the young, the dark prince, the youngest. Yeah. Yes. A gender. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so Slanish is born. It creates the Eye of Terror, which swallows up all of the Maiden Worlds. Really? That, was that's that what like created the Eye of Terror? That's yep. what created the Eye yeah, of Terror. That's really? what created the Eye of Terror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Swallows up all the, the Maiden fault. all the Maiden Worlds. Bastards. And all of those Maiden Worlds are now the primary demon worlds. Uh, oh. There's one Maiden World that made it out, um, but that is a different story for a different time. Cadia. No, no, no. no. But, <laughs> no, no. Cadia is whole separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
when all of this was happening, when, when the fall of society was happening, there were two major factions that saw what was happening. And those two major factions made decisions in order to safeguard their per, uh, uh, perseverance, their, okay. their existence, their continued existence. One were the Exodites. The Exodites, the easiest way to think about them is their space Amish. The Exodites saw what was happening in society. They got together and they moved as far away from the core yeah. of the Eldar system so as this possible. Is what, this is what always escapes me. The, the, so those four like uh, like branches of Eldari where were they when Slanesh was born and when all the shit like Oh, got, they were all just Eldari. Were, were they all together? They yes. were all Eldari. Yeah. Okay, everything was there together. Was no so the separation. only so the only so so the the society that I just described, right. that the the hate was fucking one, society, you, one entity. Um the people that were super into the hate fucking? Yeah. They're the dark Eldar. Yeah, and they're, they're they so the ones who change. basically so, kept so doing they decided to continue living hey, life buddy. exactly the way that they were living life so, so, when Slanish was. So they're so like think of like Drakari, like red light district, and yeah. then you got the Amish living out in the plains. Perfect. Yeah. And then you got regular craft and then you world. Have the craft world. And yeah. then you have uh Harlequins, right? And then you have yes. which Harle- Harlequins were were at the time like they're they're the theater district or some shit like that, right? Yeah, uh, they're of, kind they're of. kind of a whole separate deal. So yeah, okay. it, the Harlequins Harlequins are one of the those factions that people are really interested in them now. So they're getting developed now, oh, okay. uh, but they do have a very, like what you said, they're, they're, they're theater troops that right. act out essentially the war in heaven oh, and, the, okay. and the eventual heat death of the universe. Like that's wow. the story they're telling. And it's um, all in worship of like a specific God right? of a specific God. Yeah. And that, that's the other interesting thing. There is a, there in, in the Eldar pantheon, there is a specific God that matches up to uh, essentially Corn, Nurgle, uh, Slanish, and, and Zeech. Right. Um, the easiest one is Cain. Cain and Corn are very, very similar. And that's what um, Kayla Mensha Kane or whatever is like the the long name or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, to to get back, so the Exodites left very early into the fall of uh, into the fall of hedonism. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before the fall of the Eldar people, and they just went as far away as possible and settled planets that were as far away. Yep. So when far. they left, they just pretty much left to other planets, right? Yes. And they basically dedicated their lives to like like the Eldar way of life had gotten the Eldari way of life had gotten to a point where like no one needed to farm, no one needed to make things. Right. Like it was society provided everything for you and you were immortal. And the Exodites were specifically like, no, we are getting rid of as much technology as possible. We're going to keep our defense technology. We're going to keep our offense technology, but we're going to get rid of as much of our normal technology as possible and just really focus on what life is about. Right. Living life. Living life. Right. And then, uh, and then, you know, fast forward, probably 2000 years, 3000 years. Cause there's not really a lot of good, how long this all took. Right. Yeah. Then the craft worlds realized what was happening. Some people came out of the, you know, the, the hangover the next morning where you're like, man, did I really have sex with 9,000 people? <laughs> man, we got man, that, I need to get my was, shit together. Is that demon really born? Cause I put my balls in that girl's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I so, mean, I'm pretty so sure the we've craft, all after, had one of those parties where the next morning you're yeah, like, like, what did I just I do? need to change it's my that, It's that sublime <laughs> song. Who is this girl in my bed? What is this shit on my face? Good Lord. What is that awful smell? So those Eldar, before Slanish was born, we're like, there's a problem. We need to get our shit together and we need to move. Yeah. And they so built they basically created, planet sized. Yeah. Worlds, they created right? like spaceships. moon sized spaceships. That's oh, no okay. moon. <laughs> That's no moon called they're, craft they're worlds. They're rad looking. And they're the craft cool, worlds yeah. immediately started fleeing away. Right. In, into the webway, right? No. 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 Just in the fleeing space. away into uncharted space. No, they the craft worlds can't actually different... enter the webway. Yeah. Oh, really? They're yeah. too big. Uh, they I spread thought out. they actually, so what I heard was that the craft worlds escaped into the, the warp. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, they, 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 give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> so, sorry. So these big, like, like essentially like Noah's Ark, space Noah's Ark ships leave the core worlds and they're all spreading out. They're trying to get away from what they know is coming. They don't know what it's going to be and they don't know when it's going to happen, but they know it's on the way. Um, and, and like, they're, they're cool. They're made out of like psychically attuned bone called Wraith bone. They're entirely, so rad looking. they're super, yeah, cool they're looking. super cool. You look up any picture of just craft world. Like it's gnarly. Yeah. They're, they're, like, yeah, they're super spikes good. and bubbles and all sorts of weird shapes. And like, and like they're the type of the, the way that they've always been illustrated is like, like 
they're open. Like there's no window that protects you from space. It's the mass of the ship and the, has, fact, has its that, own atmosphere. And the fact that that's super psychic that just gives it an atmosphere. That's crazy. Like they're, imagine they're like the space colonies from Gundam, if it looked like a Falcon grav tank. Oh, that's sick. Okay. That's, that's yeah, kind of like yeah. the idea with like extra a massive, lots of Falcon jets. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and a couple halo rings around it. Oh, yeah. right. I mean, just for good measure. Yeah. yeah but like all the, all the round and sleekness, the like length. Right. Of it, right. And then, you know, like a big glass, really kind of ergonomic little, but like you're saying with no actual glass, gotcha. it's just so, so big. It carries an atmosphere. So to kind of, uh, to kind of sum up like, like the, the, the part that you were just asking about. Mm-hmm. So then Slanish is born. And when Slanish is born, every craft world that's within a certain radius just gets sucked into the eye of terror. Oh, and some of the craft worlds that were outside of the radius and even some of the exodite worlds that were outside of the radius, Eldar just dropped dead. Like they just died yeah. from the sweat, the psychic whiplash. Yeah. yeah the, wow. the backlash so, of Slanish's birth essentially, just kills yeah. off thousands of them. So essentially there was enough time and all this crap happening that a chunk of the Eldari people escaped into the webway and they created Comoran, which is the dark Eldar city. Oh, okay. And the dark Eldar city is mostly in the webway, but because of the way that the webway works is the dark Eldar city can be on any, any backwater district planet. It's kind of like fades district. in and out portal. of existence. Yeah. It was yeah. Just yeah. Open with there's, portals. yeah there, so there's, there's, you know, you could, you could, you could literally be on like, you could be like an Imperial Nihilus, like one, and then you can take a step and you can be all the way down, like yeah. opposite sector. The, uh, the, there was a portal on Arthas Malak, which is where Farsight first, first encountered, uh, the demons. Mm-hmm. It was a portal on Arthur's Malak where one of the ethereals went through and is now enslaved by the Dark Elder. Well, there was, ah, there was an entire... Guy, right? there was He's an so entire... used to telling people what to do, now he's getting told what to do. <laughs> so the Tau, the Tau came to the Dark Elder at one point because they were having problems with... Uh, they were having problems with, I think, Tyranids. And, and I don't quite... like. But anyway, somebody will tell me I'm wrong, but, uh, and, and they, and they said, Hey, greater good. Like these, the enemy of my enemy is my enemy. And the dark elder were like, really? Why? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they made a deal with the dark Eldar. And the deal was a certain number of fire warriors. And after the battles won, a certain number of fire warriors are going to move into Cormorant and a certain number of dark Eldar are going to move into Tau society. So some things Sounds happen. Like and then they're like, go, go away. We don't <laughs> we like don't some want weird you here. things <laughs> happen. <Get out. laughs> All of the dark elder that moved into town society, either calm the fuck down or bleeped out after. So they're like, ah, I've been here. They either became Eldari again. And we're like Zen. And now they're just part of the empire, the town empire, or they peaced out. They were like, ah, I've been here for a day. I'm going to leave. I, I got to go fuck something. All of the <laughs> fire warriors that went to the dark Eldar, a couple of months later, a couple of years later, there was another in- a tyranny incursion in the, and the tower like, Hey, we need your help again. And the dark elder were like, excellent. We can test our new weapons. And then the Tau realized that these giant, like racked war machines that were being forced into close combat. They're like, Oh, that's Bob. Yeah. That, oh, that's fire. What, warrior Bob. what, what happened to Bob? Yeah. <laughs> Why is his skin made into a couch? <laughs> that's awful. Yeah. He's just like, ah. so, <laughs> so the dark, the dark Eldar, uh, essentially. So there's two ways that the Eldar deal with the Slanish thing. Uh, so the Eldar would die when an Eldar dies. Now their soul goes to the warp and is immediately consumed, consumed by, by Slanish. Slanish. Right now, if you're a, a craft world Eldar and an Exodite Eldar or a Harlequin, you wear a soul stone. Right. And when you die, you're basically soul is captured in the soul stone. Somebody later on comes by, collects your armor, collects your soul stone and returns it to the infinity circuit for craft world and uh, Harlequin or to the world tree for exodites mm-hmm. at that, um, at that point, that's how the good side, if you want to say the good side of the Eldari faction works, right? The dark Eldar literally psychically vampire other people and feed parts of their slow to slanish slowly. Right. So they, they try to live for as long as they can by doing right. what Slanesh bids. Right. right. Yeah. Like and they're, they're using him with. His right. Rack. Yeah. They're, they're just awful. But uh, the reason that um, they're just awful, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to bring it in real quick on why I picked Exodites. Um, I've always liked Exodites. And the main reason that I've always liked Exodites is dinosaurs. With dinosaurs, dino <laughs> dinosaurs with guns like that's it like there's all there's dinosaur a, dna there was uh <laughs> there was a there was an old toy series when i was young that didn't quite make it to the like gi joe terminator not gi joe terminator gi joe 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle level called Dino Riders, where you got like this little sure, dude and a dinosaur. Those. Yeah, sure I remember those. And I love those things. So, I just remember seeing art back in the day with like T Rexes with laser cannons. Yep. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Yep. And I never knew could figure out what it was about. But there is a whole. Was there was a whole cool. like there was like a six month. You know, so Ronald Reagan became president and all of a sudden you could literally go, I'm going to make a cartoon so I can sell a toy. And there were a lot of cartoons that were made to sell toys. And one of those toys was Dino Riders. Dino Riders. History of the United States. There's a huge cult following to dinosaurs with guns. Yeah. Yeah. Huge cult following. Oh, it's awesome. But nobody likes to talk about it. Yeah. uh, It's like, it's like bronies. Yeah. Dudes that are into my little bronies. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you guys all know. That's why I play Exodites. But uh, I, I, I've fallen. And so, so Exodites are one of those things where like covered in a white dwarf covered in a splat covered in the back of a book like here and there they've never really gotten their true due right right. Um, but as somebody who kit bashes a lot and plays the way i do hobbies the way i do yep they're my guys because i get to make what i want and all that and like as you guys have seen and, and those of you who are following me on tiktok and i'm sure we'll reveal later i'm really trying to find these alien looking dinosaurs because mm-hmm. i i love the dinosaur idea but i don't necessarily want them to look like they're out of jurassic park right right so. yeah yeah but yeah, we'll, uh, I think, it, so yeah, it, that's, that's, that's our lore stuff or, or at yeah. least the lore stuff that it you guys, us. You guys' lore they, stuff was way better than mine. Basically <laughs> wraps up Death Watch, Tau, yeah. Imperial Guard, and uh, Eldar. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get if deeper. If you say that yeah. wrapped up Death Watch. Yeah, we'll, we'll get. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. The, these lores are so deep. It, dude, are. it really is. It's like Eldar alone. Change. Like, 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 I feel like you have to ask me a question. I was trying to rush. No, there yeah, that's the thing. There, right? Eldar alone, there's just so there's much so you got to get through. Eldar, so the, the Eldar, one of the oldest races. Right. So yeah. it makes sense they would have the longest history. Well, yeah. and they're they're one of the earliest introduced factions, too. I mean, yeah. the, right. the, they're the, one original, of the original, it was it was Space Marines and Eldar. I mean, it was only like four factions or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah, I think the original yeah. early, I think. Or, or yeah, yeah, orcs. Yeah. yeah, it was orcs, space marines, and, and squats. Oh, so it's so it's like <laughs> uh, Dawn of War. The original Dawn of War release was Marines, Chaos Marines, Eldar, and Orcs. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah basically. Yeah. So that, well, so, that, okay, that so actually Eldar up. in faction releases as far as like GW like model line. Yeah. Uh Eldar predate Chaos. Really? Yeah. In fact, the first Chaos Marines were just normal. Were Marines. just Marines that looked a little different. They were just this. This is a this is a Ultramarines didn't exist, but it would be like saying this is Ultramarine Tim who likes mohawks and putting spikes on his shoulders. And then people were like, "Oh, that's cool. I want a whole I faction, want a whole, whole bunch of those guys who Ultramarine are also Tim. Satan worshippers." <laughs> yeah, it kind of just evolved. It's it the 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 yeah the, no. the model line evolution is very interesting when compared yeah, to no, the nobody gives a shit about original space brains whatever <laughs> anyway but but yeah so uh, <laughs> as as we move you know forward with under the hive of madness I'm sure that we'll we'll touch on lore again I I mean I like deep we all kind of like deep diving so I'm sure that we'll oh, explore I love hearing about it we could, we could we topics. literally tried to give ourselves 15 minutes each for this yeah. lore we could go for, and we could go well, they can. an oh, yeah. entire episode could, so oh yeah like there's long. there's a bunch of guards and regiments I didn't even talk about yeah, yeah. there's so well, I mean, with, with Eldar alone, we could talk about. We there's like 20 episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. like uh, Harlequins. Yeah, yeah, these guys. Like a whole you can you can you can't death, squeeze. Yeah, death watch. Oh, like there's plenty, episodes, but yeah. but that was pretty much me squeezing everything I know about them. You can ask me questions and I can answer them. But like you guys have such a wealth of knowledge, I love hearing about it. So yeah. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I I chime in with the things that I know, like yeah, Slanesh, yeah, yeah, yeah fuck, fucks start, a lot. Wait yeah. till I start going into <laughs> Imperial Knights. Oh, oh yeah. dude, yeah, right. and then and our, and our own, our lore, own lore, yeah, our own lore. lore. Yeah, that's, that's where fun. I think yeah. I shine a little bit more. Is like yeah. my own lore. Oh yeah, I mean, you, that, you that's have your little the... like narrative for right. each guy and things yeah, like I that. Love it. Like that's that well, guys, the guys, of the game. I'll, is... I'll, I'll tell you what. Give us some feedback. Yeah. yeah, do us a favor. Give us some feedback if you really liked this episode and you want to hear about our personal lore. We want to know that you want to hear about. Oh, we're sharing. We'll crank it out. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about it, but I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm just doing this because I want to. If you guys, I think, I think. If you guys want us to deep dive a little bit more into the lore of the various, yeah, we can have like an Eldar maybe, episode or something. Yeah. yeah, and maybe how to creatively write lore for your faction. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. we'll totally. Yeah. This is what this is what we're about. When we play, we play not only for the game itself, but for the the idea that we get to make shit up. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh yeah, it's awesome. I'm all about immersion. Yeah. So if you uh if you wanna if you wanna specifically get us some information, um. As Beast just suggested, hit us up on our email at under the hive of madness at gmail.com or jimdarkgaming at gmail.com. Um, for those of you wondering, Jim Dark is G Y M D A R K. Gaming is obviously gaming. 
Um, next week, we're going to jump a little bit more into some of this lore stuff, but we're going to specifically talk about some of the factions or some of the, the one-liners that G-Dub likes to drop that maybe haven't been expanded a lot. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to lay some crude on you guys. Cause I love my what? crudies. Um, but yeah, uh, we're, we're definitely interested in interacting. We're definitely interested in knowing what you guys want to see out of us and, uh, and, and hit us up where you can find us a couple of good places other than the email addresses are Instagram. We are at Jim dark gaming, our Facebook group, just search for Jim dark gaming and you'll find us. We're on Twitter. Um, and, uh, uh, our discord should be up in about a week. Uh, so probably by the time you hear this, there'll be a discord channel for you to join, which will be Jim dark gaming as well. Um, once again, we're, we're under the hive of madness, a Jim dark podcast. And, uh, we'll talk to you guys. Thanks for joining us. Signing off. Signing off. Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Forearm number? Forearm number?